of the song is the wonderful cross of Jesus Christ it, it beats me come and die and that is what Christianity is all about I don't know if you've heard it before but when we were bought we we're bought with the excuse me sorry we we're born with the old man of sin in us and that is what makes us prone to falling into sin and temptation. But when Jesus calls us to salvation, we are, come to, we, are, we are called to come and die. The old man will die. And then we will truly believe in because Christ will put, God will put the life of Christ in us. So the cross is an invitation to come and die, die to yourself and your own leadership. 
accepting the leadership of God in your life, accepting the leadership of the Holy Spirit and Jesus in your life. So your authority dies, your leadership dies, yourself dies, self-will dies, the old man dies, and Jesus lives in you. And that's why Paul said that in the word of God, he said that I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. He said, I'm crucified with Christ, but you are still seeing me alive, right? It means that I'm not the one living, but Christ lives in me. And that's the meaning of salvation and Christianity. Um, an invitation to die to our self-will that is taking us nowhere, but and also an invitation to accept Jesus that will take us to eternal life, that will give us eternal life. And at the end of this day, allow us to spend more eternal life in heaven. Amen. So we would read, we would continue our study. We stopped last year at uh, studying about Elijah and Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. So we stopped at Elijah. We read chapter 17, but we didn't read chapter 18. So today we will read chapter 18 together. We hope that time permits us to read. We'll read it and then we will talk a little bit about it, pray and continue next time. So the, I think we're going to read it throughout the meeting. And it's good because God's word is what we are doing here, right? It's not about a book or about some eloquent preacher, but it's more about God's word. Even without like explaining God's word, the reading of God's word brings life. So if we, if we, the most important or the best way to use this time is by actually reading the Bible. So I'm very happy that we're going to use this time to read God's word. So 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1 to 45, 46. Tameka, can you read where you are? Are you able to read that aloud? I can't at the moment. You can, right? I can't at the moment, but I'm about to take a break in about 15 minutes. And I'll oh, you, you cannot at the moment. All right. No problem. I will read. I will read through it. And just listen. That's the most important thing. Just listen. Okay. So, <clears throat> First Kings chapter 18, it's a story. And let me give you a preamble of chapter 17 before I dive into 18. So, in chapter 17, Elijah, the man of God, went to the town and said, there will not be rain until I say the word. And that was like, if you, if you like I've read it before, there was no rain for about three years or three or more years. And everybody was looking for Elijah. The king was looking for Elijah to reverse the cost. And Elijah also experienced the drought he, he, he suffered some a little bit for uh, for a while, um, but God provided for him. So where where you went to, the drought also affected that area. And when the drought affected that area, God sent birds to give him food, and and he was drinking from the brook. However, the brook also dried up because of the no rain situation, and so God asked Elijah to go to a village where he would meet a widow who would give him food and feed him throughout the no rain period, the drought period. And so Elijah went to this widow and a lot of drama happened in the widow's house. The widow, first of all, did not believe um, in Elijah, but afterwards she believed and God multiplied her food and Elijah stayed with her in her guest house. However, along the way, her son died and she blamed Elijah because she's like, now that you're living with me, God will punish me for my past sins. And that is why my son died because God is punishing me for my past sins. And Elijah was really 
like scared about what just happened. And he took the son hurriedly, the dead son, and went to his chamber, his guest room, laid the son on the bed, prayed on the son, prayed and prayed and begged God, God, why did you kill the, the son of the widow whom, with whom I'm staying with? And Elijah laid on the son, laid himself on the son and <clears throat> stretched himself on the son three times and God healed the son and brought the son back to life. And Elijah took the son and gave the widow and like, see, see, he's alive. And the widow was like, oh, now I know that you are a servant of God because you, you um, raised the son to life. And then we actually concluded and said, Elijah was proved himself, Elijah proved himself as a true prophet by raising that child to life. But in these days, if you discover in the New Testament, the truth is that God allows things to happen. Sometimes God might not heal that son. And that should not be a proof of our Christianity. Our, um, a proof of our Christianity and closeness to God should be our miracle, the miracle of freedom from sin, not the miracle of raising a child from death to life or a miracle of being healed. Because from stories in the Bible, we discover that God does what he wills. Sometimes when you pray, Sometimes when someone prays on a sick person, the person might not be healed because that's God's will. The, the sick person might die, right? And that's God's will too. So a miracle should not be a proof that you are a child of God because sometimes God might not allow that miracle to happen. But a proof that you are a child of God should be the fact that you can, you have victory over sin. That is the best miracle ever. Victory over sin is the best miracle ever. If you can be tempted and you say, no, I'm not going to fall into the sin. That is a miracle right there. And that is, that should be a proof that you are a child of God. Not because of what you, not because you can perform miracles or you can raise the dead. The most important proof that you're a child of God should be the fact that you have victory over sin. You can say no to sin. And that is what we learned in the previous meetings. For this meeting, we would go into Elijah, um, Elijah's story in 1 Kings chapter 18. And I'll read since you are busy. But um, I'd like you to listen. And I, I want to ask if you have any questions from the summary I gave from previous meetings. I don't have any questions. Okay, awesome. So 1 Kings 18 verse 1. It was three years later that the king, sorry, that the Lord said to Elijah, go and tell King Ahab that I will soon send rain again. So Elijah went to tell him. Meanwhile, the famine had become very severe in Samaria. The man in charge of Ahab's household affairs was Obadiah, who was a devoted follower of the Lord. Once when Queen Jezebel had tried to kill all of the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had hidden 100 of them in two caves, 50 in each, and had, fled, and had fed them with bread and water. That same day, Elijah was, Elijah was on the way to see King Ahab. The king said to Obadiah, we must check every stream and brook to see if we can find enough grass to save at least some of my horses and moles. You go one way and I'll go the other and we will search the entire land. Verse six. So they did, each going alone. Suddenly Obadiah saw Elijah coming towards him. Obadiah recognized him at once and, and fell to the ground before him. Is it really you, my Lord Elijah, he asked. Yes, it is, Elijah replied. Now go and tell the king I am here. Oh, sir, Obadiah protested. What harm have I done to you that you are sending me to my death? For I swear by God that the king has searched every nation and kingdom on earth from end to end to find you. And each time when he was told Elijah isn't here, King Heab, and each time when he was told Elijah isn't here, 
King Ahab forced the king of that nation to swear to the truth of his claim. And now you say, go tell him Elijah is here. 12. But as soon as I leave you, the spirit of the Lord will carry you away. Who knows where? And when Ahab comes and can't find you, he will kill me. Yet I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. 13. Has no one told you about the time when Queen Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord's prophets? And I hid a hundred of them in two caves and fed them with bread and water. And now you say, go tell the king that Elijah is here. Sir, if I do that, I'm dead. 15. But Elijah said, I swear by the Lord God of the armies of heaven, in whose presence I stand, that I will present myself to Ahab today. So Abadiah went to Ahab that, sorry. So uh, uh, Abadiah went to tell Ahab that Elijah had come and Ahab went out to meet him. 17. So it is you, is it? The man who brought this disaster upon Israel. Ahab exclaimed when he saw him. You are talking about yourself, Elijah answered. For you and your family have refused to obey the Lord and have worshipped Baal instead. Now bring all the people of Israel to Mount Carmel and all 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Ashtar, Asherah who are supported by Jezebel. So Ahab summoned all the people and the prophet to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah talked to them. How long are you going to waver between two opinions? He asked the people, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. Okay. 22 then Elijah spoke again I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left he told them but Baal has 450 prophets now bring two young bulls the prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar but without putting any fire under the wood. And I will prepare the other bowl and lay it on the wood on the Lord's altar with no fire under it. Okay, 24. Then pray to your God and I will pray to the Lord. The, and the God who answers by sending fire to light the wood is the true God. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. Let me start. Close the door, please. Let me start from 23 or 22. Then Elijah spoke again. I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left. He told them, but Baal has 450 prophets. Now bring two young bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose which of, whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it down on the wood of their altar, but without putting any fire under the wood. And I will prepare the other young bull and lay it on the wood on the Lord's altar with no fire under it. 24, then pray to your God and I'll pray to the Lord. And the God who answered by sending fire to the light, to light the wood is the true God. And all the people agreed to this test, 25. Then Elijah turned to the prophets of Baal. You first, he said, for there are many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it and call to your God. But don't put fire, don't put any fire under the wood, 26. So they prepared one of the young bulls and placed it on the altar. And they called to Baal all morning, shouting, Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no reply of any kind. Then they began to dance around the altar about noontime. Elijah began mocking them. You have to shout louder than that, he scoffed. 
to catch the attention of your God. Perhaps he's taking, he's talking to someone or is out sitting on the toilet or maybe he is away on a trip or is asleep and needs to be wakened. 28. So they shouted louder and as was their custom, cut themselves with knives and swords until blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but there was no reply, no voice, no answer. Then Elijah called to the people, come over here. And they all crowded around him as he prepared the altar of the Lord, which had been turned down. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel and used the stones to rebuild the Lord's altar. Then he dug a trench about three feet wide around the altar. He piled wood upon the altar and cut the young bull into pieces and laid the pieces on the wood. Fill four barrels with water, he said, and pour the water over the carcass and the wood. After they had done this, he said, do it again, and they did. Now do it once more, and they did. And the water ran off the altar and filled the trench. 36, as the customary time for the offering, for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah walked up to the altar and prayed. O oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, prove today that you are the God of Israel and I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. 37, O oh Lord, answer me. Answer me so that these people will know that you are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. 28, then suddenly fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, the dust, and even evaporated all the water in the ditch. And when the people saw it, they fell to their faces upon the ground, shouting, Jehovah is God, Jehovah is God. Then Elijah told them to grab the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one of them escape, he commanded. So they seized them all. And Elijah took them to Kishon Brook and killed them there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go and enjoy a good meal, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. 42. So Ahab prepared a feast, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and got down on his knees with his face between his knees and said to his servants, go and look out towards the sea. He did, but returned to Elijah and told him, I didn't see anything. Then Elijah told him, go again and again and again, seven times. Finally, the seventh time, seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him to get into his chariots and get down the mountain or he'll be stopped by the rain. And sure enough, the sky was soon black with clouds and a heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm. Ahab left hastily for Jezreel and the Lord gave special strength to Elijah so that he was able to run ahead of Ahab's chariot to the entrance of the city. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus name. Amen. So. I know we listened um, very intently to the um, chapter, reading of the chapter, sorry for the interruption in the middle. However, this chapter is like a competition between Baal and Jehovah, the God that created the heavens and the earth. Baal was a God made of wood that the human beings in Israel worshiped at that time. So before we pray, I will just summarize it, ask if you have any question, and then we'll pray. So this context was a contest of gods, right? Um, God sent Elijah to do this contest. And they, he told Obadiah to go call Ahab, that rain will return 
that day. And um, Obadiah protested at first, but afterwards he went to call Ahab and Ahab came and saw Elijah and he was like, you curse this land and there has not been rain for three years. Can you reverse the curse? And Elijah told Ahab, I, I'm not the trouble of Israel. You are the trouble of Israel. You led the whole nation of Israel, God's people to worship an idol made of wood, Baal and Asherah. Those are gods made of wood. And the truth is that we in our lives, before we came to Christ, we used to worship gods unknowingly or maybe sometimes knowingly. For example, we worship some some. Some gods we worship are our jobs. Some gods might be social media. Some gods might be TV or whatever you obey unknowingly. Whatever takes your attention, whatever controls your life is a God. And so God wants to be God in our lives for real and not just a side God or are not just grouped with other gods. God wants to be the only one in our lives. And whenever you we introduce another God, God steps aside. And so God was trying to get the attention of Israel and he stepped aside and we drew rain as well. So all these things that we are enjoying is God's blessings. Rain is God's blessings. Snow is God's blessings. The sun is God's blessing. Oxygen is God's blessing. And God is still releasing those blessings to both the people that recognize him as God and the people that don't, the people that live their life the way they like, they do whatever they like, they are worldly, they commit sin, they are sinful, they even design new ways of committing sin. But God still releases his blessing to to them. He even releases his financial blessings, wisdom, he releases good health to these ones. But sometimes when he wants to get their attention, he withdraws some of those blessings from, from them in order for them to look for him. So you see some people, when they fall sick, they were unbelievers, but when they fall sick, they find God, they look for God. And so in this nation of Israel, God purposely um, withdrew rain from them so that they would look for God, you know? And so when it was time to release the rain, God sent Elijah to them and said, let's do a contest between me, God, the almighty, and this other little, little gods that you are worshiping. So the prophets of the gods that help you, teach you how to worship the gods, come forward and I will come forward. Let us have two bulls, put them on the altar, tear them up, put water, um, don't put fire. And the God that sends down fire on the offering is the true God. And Elijah told them to go first. And so the prophets of Baal prepared the altar, put the bull on the altar, the dead bull, and started calling on the, their God to send down fire on the, on the dead bull. And then they cut themselves and cried and did their usual rituals. Imagine cutting themselves with sharp objects in spite of their worship. And I, I was, that is slavery. <laughs> anyway, so they, they did their usual ritual and they cried from morning to night. And guess what? There was no fire because they are dead gods. There was no fire on the sacrifice. And Elijah said, all right, all right, let me start mine. And Elijah looked up to heaven and prayed to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel to please send fire on the offering. And fire came down from heaven and consumed that offering. It consumed and burnt the animal and it even licked up the water. So Elijah wanted to make it so obvious that there like no cheating. He actually poured water on the, on the bull, right? So you won't say, oh, it's like a coincidence that something happened and fire just started burning on the thing. He poured water and filled the altar with water. So you won't, there won't be any like loophole for doubt, right? And so even though the altar was soaking wet, 
the fire from heaven from God consumed the offering and licked up the fire, the, the water around the, the altar, and everybody was amazed. And um, Elijah said, you see now that God Almighty is the true God. And so um, Elijah uh, killed the prophet of Baal and asked them not to worship Baal anymore and reassured Ahab that God will soon send rain. But even after the reassurance, Elijah went to pray and said, God, send rain, send rain. This is the time, send rain. And then he told his servant to go check the, the weather. And the servants did not see anything. But at the seventh time he went to check, the servant saw a, a small cloud. And then that signified that rain was coming on the earth. And so that is how what the study is about today. Next week, by God's grace, we are going to dissect the study and understand how we can place ourselves in that story and <clears throat> how um, that story can affect our lives, what we have to learn from Elijah's life um, as a man of God, because God has called us to be people, his people and people of God. And so how we can behave like Elijah, have faith in God and trust God so much that he will do what he says he would do. He will send down fire, even though there was a lot of water and he doesn't need you to help him. He will do what he says he would do. So for now, I want to ask if there's any question. Do you have any question to make up? I don't have any questions. Okay, awesome. So we're going to pray now and my God's grace will meet again next two weeks. Everlasting Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because your word ministers life until people, even we pray for the people that have heard your word today, that you would um, let your word, oh God, live in their hearts and produce fruits of life, fruit of life your fruit of the spirit, which is one fruit, but there are nine members of that fruit, Lord. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, um, patience, goodness, faith, um, self-control, joy, and all the nine fruit of the spirit. Lord, I ask that your word will produce this in our lives in the name of Jesus. As we go on our weekend, we ask that you give us your peace and help us to be relaxed and ready for the, um, the activities of next week, oh God, all the blessings you have for us in this week that is not yet come to us, all the healing, no, we receive them today in the name of Jesus. I pray for my sister on the line and everyone listening, oh God, that your blessings, oh God, will rest upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. We also pray for women all over the world that you want to be part of this group. We ask that you would connect them to us oh lord and so that they will be blessed as well in the name of jesus christ let your peace rest upon us lord let your blessings and your presence and your grace and your favor and your power and your success oh god rest upon each and every one of us today oh god receive the glory ancient of days in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen thank you so much for your time no thank you okay, have a blessed day. You too.